to everyone. So uh, it's like a 11:40, almost midnight, and uh, of course it's Wednesday night. And I just finished uh, both of my classes. And forgive me because I have a cold, so I might be coughing. So, <coughs> um, so yeah, I just got finished both of my classes at Matt Sack. Uh, one of them, my assignment was due, which was basically announcing where we go ahead and we talk up until we hit the post. What that means is they have music going, we choose our own music, and basically usually songs have an introduction of music for 15 or 30 seconds, usually, and that's when the artist starts to sing. Now when you hear DJs on the radio, they are usually talking over this little intro, and they stop right before the artist begins to sing or speak or rap. And so that's what we had to do. So I did that. I did the intro. I did an outro. Usually this when they fade out the song or the song continues and abrupt, it ends abruptly and you're doing the same thing because the artist isn't there, but the music is. <clears throat> and then there's one where it's just two songs, one ends, one begins, but you don't talk over it. Anyway, um, <coughs> so for this one, these two, um, I basically, I didn't change my voice really, um, I went to a higher pitch, now this higher pitch is not what you call modifying, it's not like this at all, because when you hear me, you can tell it's really me, I mean, you know, it doesn't sound like helium or anything, but this is how I sound sometimes, not too often, but it is, it's not like I'm pushing on it, it's not, sometimes I get really excited, and this is how I sound. But most of the time, I try to talk calmly. Just because that's how it works. So, this is me. This is how I normally sound. But, usually, I don't sound like that. Usually, I sound more like this. So, when it comes to the music intro, I'm doing a dance song. So, I go ahead and I use this voice. So, I say, you know what? This is DJ RC in the mix and blah, blah, blah. You know, I add a little more slang than usual. Um, if I could even try to imitate it, it's like, yo, this is DJ RC, blah, 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 blah. So I went a little higher than usual, but this is still part of my normal voice, okay? Just pointing that straight out. Okay, so... <coughs> <coughs> it seems like everyone liked it. That was fine. And um, everyone went ahead and they had their turn because it's like a presentation. And then he has this one paragraph where it shows, uh, I guess, a commercial, we can put it, for a radio station, just a general in particular one. And he says, go ahead and pick out the pinpoints of this. I want you to reword it and put in your own words. And he says, then we're going to come up and we're going to record you. I'm like, okay. So people are trying to do it on the fly, improv and they're not doing that good of a job. And so I went ahead and wrote something out. He said, you can write your own too, my own version of it. And I went ahead and I did the same voice that I did on those two tracks. He says, that's good. And just like everyone else did, he says, now do it without the script. Just look at the screen and, he says, and just summarize it for me. Don't look at anything. Just tell us in your own words. He's like, you already know it. Just tell us in your own words. That's what he was telling everyone. So I went ahead and used this voice. And... <coughs> I guess when I was using this voice, you know, um, you know, I, we recorded it, hit stop, and then he says, okay, let's try this again. He's like, I want to talk to the real Richard, okay? Real Richard. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. I want to talk to the real Richard. I'm like, well, I didn't say anything, but I'm like, well, what does that mean? Real Richard, was that not being me? Was I trying to be like too suave? Was the other one where I was just putting a bit more slang and using a little more attitude not correct? In this class, they everyone has a certain nickname they go by. They pick out these two traits. So people have like awesome Mike and stuff like that. I have compassionate and inquisitive Richard. That's me. <clears throat> so I don't know. Maybe that's not who I was supposed to Maybe that's who I was supposed to be, and I wasn't doing that. But 
just him saying that kind of got to me because when he says he wants to speak to your real Richard, I don't know what the hell that is. And yeah, I have an idea of who I am to a point, but it's not like he's going to hypnotize me and, and, you know, it's like I wasn't sure how to act or, or what to do. So he asked me questions about basically the uh, <clears throat> commercial as if he was a person who was curious about this and I was telling him. So I just tried to talk as normally as possible because I wasn't sure what to use. So this is usually it. I wasn't sure what I really wanted. Or, well, I wasn't sure what he wanted from me. I know it was a reverse psychology type of thing. So... <coughs> Basically, you could relax and then your real persona would come out and shine. But I think that was more of a worse take than the other two that I did. But it, it just got me thinking of a lot of different things. You know, he's like, I want to speak to real Richard. Well, the real Richard has no confidence. If you really want me, you really want to hear that? The real Richard doesn't really care about this whole commercial thing that you're trying to do. I would probably try to sway people away from it because I see how the radio advertisement just wants listeners to be hooked on what they're doing. And if they have to give away prizes to give a bigger, larger audience there, they'll do it because they can push more advertisements. And I guess in this commercial that, you know, almost made up and stuff, you have to log on and become a, a what is it, a listener on their website and <clears throat> that's why I would point out I mean it's not like I would go according to whatever they were saying I guess he kind of hit a nerve because this is one thing I've been having a lot of trouble dealing with in the past of what type of person I am who the real me is am I a, not to say outgoing but am I really a loner Am I really a, an introvert to a huge um, <clears throat> extent, or am I like somewhere in between? I'm not really a, that open of a person. It's not like I walk into a room and say, hey everyone, how's it going? No, I don't do that at all. And, you know, just like I was saying before, yeah, I get what he was trying to do, but the fact that he did that just really open a lot of questions about myself and it just I didn't like it no it's not something I was gonna complain about or anything like that it's just me personally it just kind of hit a nerve opened the floodgates and it made me feel like doing a vlog <coughs> I actually went on some websites just some things about INFJs because that's what I am and you know, I was just typing in, we're loners, if you have low self-esteem, which is something that I do, that I still work on from time to time. And <coughs> also, you know, um, just uh, a lot of other things you just have to be with, with who I am and whether that falls into that category. Because after a while, you just think, well, you know, INFJs, if you don't know what it is, um, just type in myers Rig. Or personality test, or you can just type in INFJ and we'll see what it's part of. But uh, basically, it makes me wonder how much of that is me and how much of it is just normal. And when I say normal, I mean what doesn't fall into that category. You guys look up horoscopes and you're like, oh my gosh, that's totally me. Yeah, how much of that is really you and how much of it isn't? This Myers Briggs test is all more scientific based. And it's not 100%, and they always say so, that's not. But again, a lot of things are dead on, and maybe some things aren't, but... <sighs> At this age, it's kind of... I don't know if it's odd to question still who you are. And if it's okay for you to really be like that, questioning yourself. But that's why I'm left uh, lingering. And I have uh, something to do tomorrow that requires me to be myself. Of course, by the time this blog goes up, by the time you guys see it or you can post a comment, this thing will be done. 
So, you know, I, I have an idea of how to approach it. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like this. Where's your energy? You know, something like that. I do have an idea, but still, it just really uh, touched the nerve. So, um, anyway, um, I might as well just catch you guys up on some stuff. Uh, my 30th birthday party was uh, pretty good. Uh, only a couple people went. Um, it was um, a friend of the family, the one that we all know. Um, and when I say we, I just know my family, not, not you guys in particular. But um, my friend Barbara came over. <coughs> and my uh, friend, who you all know, Tim, came over. And uh, it was really great. I just had a phenomenal time. Just being there and talking with them and just small talk. It's funny because on Friday, the day before, a couple of days before my actual birthday, I went to a bar and, or let's just call it a club. And um, there were a lot of people there. Uh, actually, yeah, all the people who I invited, uh, maybe two people showed up, it's kind of funny, but, um, anyway, it was just a huge uh, club, and I was there, my friend was DJing, and I noticed, you know, I had a pretty good time, but I noticed that I don't have to be around a lot of friends in that sense, I mean, that, that's not what took place in this situation, but still, I don't have to be around a lot of people to actually have a good time. And it's something that I was really contemplating about because I wasn't sure if I wanted my actual birthday party to be filled with friends or just a couple of individuals. And actually, amazing, for my birthday party, I invited quite a few people. And when I say quite a few, I mean about eight people, maybe ten. Because that's a lot for me. And it turns out that only a couple of people, like... Like I said, two people, uh, including my godparents, were the ones who showed up. And that was my sister who opened it, closed the door. You all know her from the previous video where Tim and I trade places, and that was an awesome April Fool's thing that I don't know if too many people got. But um, <coughs> it was something that I realized at my birthday party, even though not a lot of people showed up, the people who did come. It was just really amazing. And I think that if there were more people there, it might not have been as memorable. And maybe that's one thing to help you guys out. For those of you who are kind of stuck, who feel kind of shy, don't want to invite too many people over. It's okay to just invite a couple of people. And that's it. You don't need a lot of people to have a lot of fun. Some people do. Some people have those huge birthday bashes, and they have extravagant type, you know, places to hold these things. And, doots, doots, and that's all you hear. And people are partying, drinking beer, and all that stuff. If that works for them, that works for them. But for me, it doesn't, because I can't just have all these people there. I guess it kind of throws me off because. I know I brought this up in a couple of vlogs before, but each a lot of these people I've met over a large period of time, and each one of them knows me differently. And if all these people merge together, it's a very odd feeling. Because if you put them all together, they probably know a lot about me. But for each one of them to find out something different or to see me act a certain way, that's a problem. And again, it brings me back to who is Richard. Well, to Richard, someone might think that I'm a very funny person who likes to talk in depth about things. And to someone else, I'm a very shy and quiet person who doesn't talk a whole lot but agrees. 
and to someone else, a very musical person who mixes a lot. And, you know, it goes on and on and on. And there's just so many different ideas of who I am that it becomes <coughs> very difficult if this were to happen to be around so many people. The fact that people know me as Ricky instead of Richard throws people off. When I was at college, someone called me Ricky, and I was right here, and our person who knew me as Richard is right there, and they're like, who's Ricky? With the most bizarre look on their face when they found that I was that person. It's just that, that the fact that I went by a different name. Yes, the names are related, but the fact that I went by a totally different name reveals that. In a sense, I am a, kind of like a mystery. Yeah, I like to be mysterious. It's not like I try to be. But that's who I am. And I kind of like being a little hidden and not all eyes on me. And I don't know. Maybe that's what limits me from making a lot of friends. And maybe that's a good thing. One thing that I was talking to uh, Tim about uh, one time when we were hanging out is the idea or just the fact that, you know, that when I go to work, people see me differently. They don't see who I really am. Not a lot of people really do. Only those who are kind of close to me. That's because I choose to open up to them. I really try to get to know people before I open up, or while I get to know them, I open up. But when I'm at work, I work. <coughs> people say hi, I talk to them. They talk about, I don't know, Avatar The Last Airbender, or something like that. I'll say, sure, I've seen the movie. We'll talk about comics and stuff like that but let's put it this way if I didn't have a name badge they wouldn't know what my last name was most of them don't know I mix music I do voices at work for fun because it's something that I think is kind of funny most people don't know most people a lot of people don't know I do vlogs a lot of people don't know what I do on the weekends or when I'm not at work. Because personally, I think it would be kind of boring because I like to be by myself. And I think a lot of people say, well, why? Don't you go out? Sure, but why? Do I have to go out? Do I have to go to clubs? Do I have to go with friends everywhere just to like build up a reputation? Is it really that important? Wow, dude, he was over here. Dude, he's cool. Do I really have to go to all the different parties that are everywhere else that everyone else is going to? Do I really have to be a part of that to be someone? I'm not slamming those people who do. It's just... I feel that in most places, I'm very hidden. And I'm okay with that. But sometimes someone points it out and says that this is how people view you and I take it to heart because their view is something that I don't want them to see me as it's not so much a really negative thing but it's something that makes me think that they don't know me and yet they're projecting this type of view Again, it's not really super negative. It's just a view. Something bad in that sense. But I guess, just like my teacher who wants to know the real me, I couldn't be that person even if I wanted to. Because I'm not yet figuring out who I am. I mean, if someone told you to be the real you, who are you? Would you really know how to act? 
how to go into character, character, how to be yourself, how to really, <coughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. I hope you all are doing well. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you later. Uh, special shout out to Diane Kazoo. Uh, congratulations on coming back. And uh, I hope you continue to make videos even after your uh, one month. Because, you know, you're getting used to seeing you on there. And, uh, you know, I've seen a couple of people pop on here and there, and uh, who knows, maybe it'll spread, maybe we'll see more old faces coming back. So uh, until then, I will talk to you guys later. Take care.